Since the beginning of humankind, we have been taking advantage of what Mother Nature provides for us. From using animals, cereals, and plants, to discovering the first antibiotic, we have come a long way. We know our world is rich. Animals, plants, and microorganisms contain billions of useful genetic resources. Some are already widely known, and many of them are being used to produce medicine, food, cosmetics, and other important things. But a huge part of what nature holds for us still remains undiscovered. Take a plant, for example, deeply hidden in the rainforest. Only the local people may be aware of what the plant can be used for. Yet, its genetic composition could be useful to millions of people all over our planet. Sharing and using the world's genetic resources is important for the progress of humankind. This is why we need internationally agreed terms for ABS, access and benefit sharing, with regard to genetic resources. How to access genetic resources and share the benefits between those who use them and those who provide them in a fair and equitable way is illustrated in ABS Simply Explained. Every country holds rights over animals, plants, and genetic resources found within its borders. Anyone from another country who wants to use such resources must respect these sovereign rights. That was agreed upon by 172 countries at the UN Rio Summit in 1992 when the CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity, was born. The Convention on Biological Diversity and its Bonn Guidelines define the ABS principles. An interested foreign researcher or company may only access a genetic resource if allowed by the providing country. This also includes traditional knowledge that is associated with the genetic resource, because traditional knowledge held by indigenous and local communities often plays an important role in the discovery of new active ingredients in genetic resources. In accordance with national legislation, a PIC, a prior informed consent, needs to be obtained from the providing country. The PIC request should outline the nature and the intended goal of the planned research and utilization. The MAT, the mutually agreed terms, will then define the benefits for the provider of the genetic resource as well as further contractual issues. These benefits could be monetary, such as a lump sum payment, or a share of the profit, or non-monetary, such as a transfer of knowledge, technology, or training. These rules apply to commercial users and on the basis of special considerations also to non-commercial users. The idea behind this concept is to help conserve our biodiversity by sharing the benefits from its utilization in a fair and equitable way. In 2010, the Nagoya Protocol fleshed out and specified the access and benefit sharing principles of the CBD for countries providing and using genetic resources in a legally binding way. All the concepts explained so far are now part of the protocol, which will enter into force when 50 parties have ratified it to ensure facilitated access to genetic resources and the sharing of benefits arising from their use. The protocol is to enhance legal certainty for all parties involved in the utilization of genetic resources. And another important element was added to the protocol. Official checkpoints now have to be designated in countries where genetic resources are being utilized. Along the research and development chain, these checkpoints will help verify whether PIC has been obtained and MAT have been established. The collected information will then be sent to a specific public database where it can be reviewed by the country that has provided access to the resource. This procedure allows for the tracking of a genetic resource from provider to user all the way to innovation and potential commercialization. This helps to ensure fair sharing of benefits if a product based on a genetic resource is introduced to the market. Now, all ratifying countries need to translate the provisions of the Nagoya Protocol into domestic laws or regulations that reflect the interests of all stakeholders concerned. 
ABS, implemented properly, holds great potential for multiple benefits for users, providers, and for the conservation of nature.